Inventory continued to rebound, but the gap between the previous lowest level of 2021, it widened. It's just not getting any better for buyers. In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update. And let's talk about taking vacant commercial buildings and turning them into housing units. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I'm here to help. Right on cue, I believe that the summer real estate market, well, it's here. It's a slowdown. It's a slowdown because so many people leave for the weekend or are away for the entire week during these summer months. This is why it's so imperative that you do not have showing starting on the weekend if you're selling your house. You need to allow buyers in on Thursday and Friday. That is if you're looking to maximize your sales price and get the best terms on this sale. But now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,851 homes on the market. That inventory increased by 152 units. Yeah, but here's the rub. Inventory, it's up, but the gap between the levels continued to widen. This time last year, there were 5,520 homes on the market. This means that we currently have 1,669 fewer houses or about 30% fewer houses on the market today than the same time last year. 758 fewer homes or 16% less inventory than we did compared to the same time in 2021. This chart really shows how dire the inventory issue is. I see no way that we hit an inventory peak of 4,500 units this year. The summer peak of inventory should happen, well, within the next two weeks and then slowly decrease, with another inventory build happening after Labor Day and what will most likely be a yearly inventory peak towards the end of September. New listings were pretty strong this week. We broke the 1,000 mark again. We had 1,006 newly listed homes come on the market. This means that we were 26.9% off of the amount of new listings that came on the market this time last year when there were 1,376 homes listed. Take out the 4th of July holiday, and it isn't that far off the four-week rolling average of 1,061 units. We had 892 single-family homes go under agreement this week. Now, this is compared to the 1,230 homes that went under agreement the same week last year. This means that under agreements were off by 27 and a half percent excluding the fourth of july data the four week rolling average is 1074 units so this data is showing a bit of that summer slowdown that i talked about earlier and in regards to the summer slowdown i really do think it is a little based off of the price range the lower price range called sub six or seven hundred thousand dollars is still seeing relatively strong activity all in all this was a pretty balanced week inventory was off by 27 percent and sales were off by 27 and a half percent so market balance i'm gonna take that there were 832 single-family homes that sold last week for an average sales price of $826,000 and a median sales price of $650,000. Did you see that we just released the July market update that goes over the market stats for the first half of 2023? The condo market was down while the multifamily market was actually up and a lot. You should check it out. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months. Well, that's considered a seller's market, but the closer you get to zero, the stronger seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory nudged up to 1.47 months compared to last week's 1.43 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong seller's market. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now on to the condo market. We had 2,272 condos on the market as of Monday. Inventory continued to build this week, but we are still not 50 units off of our peak, which was the week right before the 4th of July holiday. Now, the additional inventory, it's welcome news. It's just not enough. It, it's actually becoming a painful chart to look at. We currently have 542 units less in inventory than compared to the same time in 2022. This was a slight improvement from last week when we had 569 fewer condos, but there are still 19% fewer condos for a buyer to look at today than the same time last year. Just absolute craziness. Meanwhile, there were some surprises in the new listings and under agreements for the condo market. There were 537 condos that came on the week this week. Now, the four-week rolling average, excluding for the July holiday, is 463 units. We were well ahead of that number. But how about this? The 537 units this year is compared to the 562 units that we listed the same week in 2022. This means that new listings were off by only 4.5%. There were 381 condos that went under agreement this week. The four-week rolling average, excluding for the July, is 447 units. So we were quite a bit off that number. But when comparing it to the same week last year, it wasn't bad. In 2022, we put 425 condos under agreement. This means that the level of sales was off by only 10.4%. So inventory was down by 4.5% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 10.4%. If you're a buyer, then this is some welcome news. You want to see an imbalance from the listing side, not the under agreement side. 
something to take note, but not necessarily to be worried about at this point if you're a seller, especially as the last three weeks, it's been a pretty big imbalance in the other way. There are 357 condos that sold last week for a average sales price of $780,000 and that median sales price of $570,000. Months of inventory increased to 1.83 months from last week's 1.74 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? Is it makes a huge difference in that YouTube algorithm and while subscribing, that one, it doesn't hurt either. Last week, we talked about some possible market movers. And we got one. It was a great week for interest rates. As interest rates were down almost one quarter of a point. So what happened? Well, the consumer price index came in at the lowest level since March 2021. CPI went up by 0.2% month over month and by 3% year over year. This was lower than expected, which is why we saw that market rally for the mortgage market. But declaring victory over inflation, it's much too early. I remember when I was doing the data comparing the inflation rate and home appreciation rate in the 1970s, and when inflation went down, only to spike into crazy territories after. Inflation, it's hard to stomp out. It does not die easily. If you let your foot off the inflation's hypothetical neck, if you will, for just a moment, then it's going to come back roaring. The Fed didn't budge their rate in the last meeting, and the expectation is that they're going to hike it in this next meeting. Believe it or not, we should all be hoping the Fed learned from their lessons in the 1970s and have the stomach to do another hike. Oh, and if you want to see the data behind that video that compares inflation rate to the home price appreciation, then take a look at the video at the top of the screen right up here. I mentioned a long time ago that I felt they were going to start flipping commercial properties to residential properties, and it looks like that thought process is starting to gain some steam. Mayors and cities across the U.S. want to loosen rules that can slow the pace of office to residential conversions. In some instances, cities have offered generous tax abatements to the developers who build new housing. There are cities like San Francisco that have nearly a 25% office vacancy rate. Boston's vacancy rate is flirting with that 20% mark. Boston so far is faring a lot better than San Francisco. We talked about the doom loop, and a lot of these cities are in the midst of businesses actually leaving or going out of business, which means tax revenues are going to go down for the city. Cities cut resources, like police. Crime goes up. City continues to decline, and then more businesses go out of business, and then revenues decrease even more, and then that vicious cycle, well, it continues. Flipping commercial properties to residential may help for a wrench in that doom loop. Residential tax revenues aren't as high as commercial tax revenues, but something, it's better than nothing. The article states that cities like Philadelphia have previously embraced these policies to revitalize their downtowns, and Philadelphia homeowners and investors received more than $1 billion in tax breaks for their renovation projects. But check this out. A small collective of developers have taken on this challenging slice of the real estate business since 2,498 buildings have been converted in the U.S., creating 49,390 new housing units through the final quarter of 2022, according to a real estate services firm, CBRE. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, and we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about the market data? Drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. Until next time.